time. Welcome. Can you hear me clearly? You sound a little bit faint. I can, I can, I can. Okay, so I was just wondering. So welcome. My name is Jenny Baker Jones, for those of you who don't know. Um, and I am the co-founder, the founder, sorry, of um, Big Head Start Jamaica. We are a business development coaching firm that we help people to get their business started right. And with me this evening is Andrew McGibbon from This Identify. We do leadership coaching, personal development. Okay, great. So it's good to have you. So this evening's topic is critic consciousness and consistency. And if it seems a little disjointed, trust me, you're going to want to stick around and wait for this one. This one is really interesting. So, Andrea, tell us about the topic. Why this topic? <laughs> Why these three C's? Oh my gosh, they're like C's for success. Um, criticisms is something that we each, I believe, have to overcome. It's one of those tough things that we all face. Um, we all don't like, but we have to get used to it and know how to use it and how, how to overcome. Um, consciousness is your only avenue for making productive and progressive changes. So that's another very important C. And then consistency is how you make things automatic. You know, you create habits. And of course, we're thinking about creating healthy, progressive habits. Right, 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 right. So, you know, I had a thought as you're talking about um, critics. Um, and it goes to, back to one of the, the lives we did earlier about identity. Um, and I, I think to a great extent, if you're very clear about who you are, then it's harder for criticism to unravel you. Harder, yeah. <laughs> harder, not impossible. Harder, not impossible harder. Yeah. It, it, it so is. Possible. So, I mean, the more you are, the more you are aware of yourself, the more you are conscious of what is truly you, the more confident you will be. The thing with criticisms is that it tends to threaten you know what you feel is or what your reality is and what your truth little t is um what your feelings are towards something what your perceptions are so it's very personal it's almost like a personal attack which is that people are offended you know when they are criticized um but the more you know who you are especially as a child of God, how God created you, what is truly yours, not the, not the temporary part of you that, you know, you have this temporary mode that you operate in, but the true you, you, you're not going to avoid criticisms, but you respond differently. Friendly. Um, and especially where your heart is at the right place um, and you are at the right place, you you learn to respond differently to criticisms. And believe me, it's something that we all have to go through. We have to go through the mistakes of it. Um, and then we have to see the value in criticisms. But it doesn't mean that every criticism is valuable. But because you control the handle of your life, you decide how you respond. So either way, your response has to be valuable. So if it is a negative criticism that does not truly apply to the situation, you have to be mature and bold enough to let it go. Yeah. And that's a healthy response. I, I, I read a book once that says that offense is the base of Satan. That we, it's, a, it's, it's a play on our whole identity and, and our self-esteem how much we know about ourselves, how much, you know, so sometimes I believe that criticism highlights within us 
those things that we're not clear about. Yeah. Those things yeah. that we're, we're unsure about. Those things that, um, and it's almost like there are raw areas, and the criticism it just goes there and it's like salt that you need to um, that's already there that you are not sure about. And then somebody comes on top of that and puts it in. And yeah. then it becomes this, this whole thing. And, and, and very often, this is why we are very reactive to criticism, you know, because we still have that little sore that we haven't dealt with. And that sore really is, is, is at the end of the day an identity issue. It is. Um, but the challenge is that because you're not conscious of it, you don't even know it's a sore. You don't even know it's a it's an area that needs to be sealed. Your response to criticism now is going to be from an, a, a place of offense, mm -hmm. you know. And as you say in that quote, another one I know is an offense is an occasion to sin, you know. Mm -hmm. But equally, if it's an occasion to sin, it's also an occasion to win, you know. That's how I put it. So when somebody offends you or says something or does something that is critical of something you've done or something you're doing, um, whether it is a negative or a positive criticism, um, it's having that posture where you first assess what is being said or done, you know, and if you identify that, no, what they've said is not true. And this is an honest assessment. You release it. And if you assess what they say and there is some truth to it, be gracious enough to accept it, you know, because it's an opportunity to, opportunity to, to improve, you know, yeah. as opposed to, you know, responding in a way where you get dirty or you trace off somebody or you put them in the place, that kind of a thing. And it, at the moment, it may feel as if it is something good, but a week from now, when you look back, you're not going to be proud of the moment. Yeah. You pretty much fell in the trap of sinning. Yeah. And and not only that, you fell into that trap one, but you know, it leads to other things too. So so there are two two rules in my mind. One is that you, you once you drop into that hole of, of, of sin, um you 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 may end up in a situation where there's unforgiveness. You end up in a situation where there's bitterness. Right, it grows. Situation. It's, it's like it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's a, a trap, man. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. And, and, and then you, next thing you know, you're gossiping to somebody else about this person. Mm -hmm. they, you resent them. You resent, it's like all of these things are tied up. And then the other road is self examination, it's becoming aware. Like, Stopping, having the consciousness to stop and say, well, why did I respond in that way? Um, so that takes us to the second C. Yeah, is there something here that I need to explore? Because, you know, kind of why, why, what was, what, 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 what wound is there? What open wound is there that would cause me to respond in this manner? You know, um, it's huge. And then too, there's also the other mood of, I'm already criticizing myself about this thing. Yeah. And, you know, um, somebody else comes and does it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's worse. And, and yeah, you're not going to be as <laughs> understanding. Yeah, it yeah. really, it's pouring fuel on, you know, some, some coals that are already lit. Exactly. And so when somebody criticizes you, you go, boy, it's like you just react. Yeah. And a lot of we tend to think we can't control our responses, but that's the one thing we have control over. You know? And we culturally we have this thing is you can't let them talk to you like that. You can't let them you know? It's it's almost an affront and it, it just adds to the whole offense vibe. Where, yeah. you know, it's it, it like it justifies taking offense to something. It's 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 also the quick to the tendency that we're quick to respond to everything, right? So, which is why we've combined these three things. So we've now integrated criticisms with consciousness and the need to be aware, need to um, observe yourself. But now we're going to the third C, which is consistency. 
And so it touches on how do I respond and how do I um, train myself to respond a certain way when criticisms come because they're not going to give you notice when they're coming. They're going to come. And you want to be the kind of person who will hear something but don't immediately respond to it, especially when you, you eat enough pepper the day, right? You want to be able to pause. But that is something that you have to train yourself to do, you know? So we'll, we'll talk more about that, but that's how the three things end up combining because how, you, how you're able now to respond better to criticisms is through this process of observing yourself, identifying why my pepper so hot, what are the wounds that are there, what are my sensitivities, accepting the fact that my sensitivities are my personal things, and when you're interacting with people, there needs to be a safe space that all humans operate in. And we have to kind of take our sensitivities out of it, or else we're constantly going to have conflicts and clashes. So once we have a community environment, um, there are some, some things that we have to not do, and there are some things that we need to do, and you won't be able to do them unless you're conscious, right? Because it's going to take conscious effort. And again, for you to be able to do all of this naturally, it's about how can I make this a habit over time? What do I start doing? You know, and the key, of course, is consistency. So your practice, 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 practice. You know, I, I, I remember um, I used to have a really hot temper, really very responsive to everything. It's cold now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I thought I would have to But anyway, um, I, and then I started noticing um, I started noticing how I would feel long before I got anything out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Like my whole body was started tensing up and I started to notice. And so once I noticed how I was feeling, I could I could stop it, I could control it, I could say, all right, Dan, calm down. Because before I didn't think I had any control over it, I just felt like, oh, I just got mad. No. Right. Long before your body starts to give you signs. And so you can actually control your response. Yeah. You get the stuff. So the whole thing is about, in my mind, paying attention to yourself. Yeah. You know, kind of just stop and say, well, what am I feeling? What am I? And so you're talking to somebody. You literally feel your heart start racing. You feel your body start tense up. You feel all of these things actually happen before. But a lot of times we are in this um, unconscious state where right. we feel like right away. So your body always gives you signals. You know, your body always gives you signals. It's the interesting um, thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You can hear me? Yeah, man, go ahead. Right. So that's an interesting thing about what you just said is by the time your body begins to show signals, that's actually not even the first trick. That's not the first sign. You know, before your body starts responding, and you mentioned one, there was a feeling. There was an emotion before you, the body started responding because that's what your physical body is responding to. What causes the emotion? A thought. So there was a thought also. In the moment, there was a thought. Nobody can see your thoughts, but you had a thought in your head. And so it actually starts from a thought. So now the, the more you are aware of yourself, because we we're talking about image earlier and being familiar with who we truly are, the more you're aware of yourself, the easier you can catch it at the thought level, or you can catch it at the feelings level, or you can catch it now when it becomes a physical, you know, your body starts to tense up, you start to breathe faster, you know, you get your, your facial features start changing, you know, it, it's about being conscious of all of those changes taking place in your being. And, and, and you're right, we are able to respond. But the key is, if you're not conscious 
of what you're doing, if you're not aware and if you're not observing yourself, then you're not going to pick it up. And that's what beats us. Yeah. And that's where the, the, whole, the, 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 the whole thing of becoming aware. If you're not aware of something, you can't do it. Can't do anything about it. So, yeah, you can't do anything about the process and about creating that habit of becoming aware of ourselves. Okay. Um, one of the easiest, how I, I help to build my own awareness. One of the first things is to pause. I think that is easier for all of us to do. Um, it starts by doing even moments of silence. Cause if, if you are like me, we hardly have moments of silence. Cause we're always going, going, going. And so this is harder for some people than for others. But now you start taking, start small. That's another key thing to building a habit. You have to be consistent, but you also have to start small. So take five minutes. Okay, maybe a minute. Because five minutes might seem like the whole lifetime to you. So you take a minute, start a timer, and just allow yourself to just sit in silence. Say nothing. Shut your thoughts down. Um, first couple times, it went flat bad. <laughs> but continue to do it. And then eventually, you'll find that you improve. And then you move from one minute to two minutes. You know, before you know it, you reach five minutes. And then you can do half an hour. But that is really just for training purposes. It's yeah. training yourself to be silent. It's training yourself yeah. to stop your thoughts, to stop the thinking, um, to stop talking, to stop the physical body from doing anything. Just sit still. So that's, that's one way of breaking it. Another thing is, so how you use that is that once you are versed in it, when situations, not just a, a, a threat of criticism, but any situation, you are able to pause. Yeah. Crisis hit before you start overreacting or you know um, panicking. Pause. And there's this thing called um, five seconds rule. So you use up that five seconds to pause, to think straight, to analyze what is happening, and then also decide how do I want this to end. You know, even the thought of. Um, a month from now, when I look back at this situation, how would I have wanted myself to respond? It's right. kind of having right. that, right. you know, um, so that is what the awareness is. It's recognizing what is happening in your space right now, but it's also you now inviting your principles, your goals, your dreams, your image, your purpose, everything else to the table so that you now right. can make a informed decision. And one that you won't regret. So what else you can use to become more aware? Observation. Yeah. Observe yourself in conversation. Listen all the time. Just observe. So there is a part of us because we're made of three parts, right? Again, as you know yourself some more, you're able to isolate your soul from your spirit, from your physical body. You become conscious of how to split. So your spirit is a knower. Your spirit observes you all the time. Once you're able to, to connect with your spirit, you're able to observe what you're doing. So you're carrying on as you normally do, but there's this part of you that's now just being very watchful, very mindful of what you're doing. Not judgmental, just observing. Because the minute you become judgmental, you're now creating a thought, a feeling, and then you're going to get a reaction, and that's not what you want. You just want to gather information about yourself, and that's observation. It's almost like you're a third party looking at yourself, right? Um, watch, what, be, be aware of your body language. Be aware of what somebody may be saying and the word that you might respond to differently. Be aware of the thought that comes or the feeling that's created. Be aware of how you respond in a certain situation. Be aware of your, your mannerism. You know, be aware of your tone. Be aware of the language you're using, you know, that kind of a thing. Be aware of whether or not you're listening to the person as opposed to having a mental conversation when you're supposed to be listening to them. It's that kind of a thing, like every facet of who we are. When we can observe, when we learn to observe ourselves, we can gather information on all of that. And also listen to understand versus listening to respond. Correct. So that's the active listening. Why do you need to listen? Again, as we said, 
if you don't if you're not aware of something then you can't improve it right or you can't remove it so what you're really doing is gathering information I get in some feedback is that me or you I hearing some click click like people are inside the internet kind of trying to work out some stuff but you're really gathering information now that you will use to assess is this something I want to change is this something I want to keep as a part of my life is this something I need to work on right people just accept themselves as they are and we're not supposed to huh? We're too, we're too old for change. No, we can change. And every opportunity is a, is an ex, is a, is a, every experience we have is an opportunity to enhance, you know, our personality, enhance who we are. I can't hear you properly. I'm saying every opportunity is, a, is an opportunity to become a better version of yourself. A better version of yourself as well as to identify what do I keep maintaining. So I don't want us to leave to only think about the changes that we want to make. There are also good things that we have going for us already. And if we don't maintain them, we're going to lose them. So maintenance is also important. I mean, being aware is a huge achievement because nothing starts before awareness. So get into the stage where you're now gathering more information on yourself. You have already set yourself up for enhancement and change um, because now you can't undo what you know, <laughs> right? So you will always have that information in the back of your mind. You will now begin to link things together and say, oh, that's why I'm always getting in trouble or I'm always in this argument with so many different people because you have this tendency, you know, whether it's how you respond to people or attitude that you're, you know. Um, so after you identify some stuff where you say, you know what, this is not helping me. It's not helping my relationships. It's also not making me a better person. It's not enhancing my well-being. This is actually something that's affecting me negatively. I need to improve this quality. As you said, one of the one of the key things is extending grace because grace means that listen, it took me years to cement this quality and now I'm going to try to change it. It's going to take some time to also change it. Right? Right. But the same way that you created a bad habit is the same way you can create a good habit. So the good news is that you've already mastered the process. It's just that, no, you need to have a different input in it to get a different outcome. So, and, and also, it's now a conscious decision. It's also a conscious decision. It is your decision. You champion it. You own it. You pursue it all the way. So now what do you do? You may not be able to, on your own, formulate, okay, what do I do? So sometimes you may need to get help. That's, that's no doubt. You may need to get help to formulate the next step, and that's what coaches do predominantly to help you to resolve or, or to find, you know, to map what you need to map in order to get to a particular destination. So we'll basically just help you to clear the clutter and the confusion in your head, but it's really your stuff. Um, so you may need to get help, but if you are the type of person who already knows how to, to sift through your thoughts and to sit down and map and make decisions and, and work at it, then you're really just setting one a goal. What's the goal? The goal is identifying what the change you want to make, right? Then after you identify the goal, you have to map the path. The map, mapping the path now is being very honest about where you are. No judgment. Remember we spoke about no judgment when you're observing. It's just where you are. That's the truth of where you are. 
and then there is where you want to get to. So now you're moving from point A to point B and you need to now chart a course. So you're basically saying, what do I need to do? What are the habits that will cause me to get to that destination? What are the habits that will prevent me and limiting me from getting to that destination? So what you're doing now is zooming in on what needs to go and then probably know what you need to introduce. No, you can't do everything one time. Yes, Jan. That whole process um, made it really difficult for some people because they have been doing this for so long. It's almost like they can't even identify a goal. They can't be <laughs> so difficult to see themselves in any other way because this is what they've known and accepted and 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 championed for so long. Yeah. Which is like with the boy and old change and that kind of thing because they, there's no different otherwise and i would back to say you know kind of like a good place to start if you're stuck in that position is well what does god say about me in relationship to the big issue you know because his 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 word is always true yes you can't identify the truth for yourself go back to what he says about you and start there yeah you know, start there because then that, that that that's the best starting point that you could ever have because that's where you start with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so that is one of the things that you can accept as true, even if you can't see for yourself in the moment. You know, even if you can't say, well, I can't I change and I can't see what I would change so and I don't know how. And start right there. And the beauty yeah. about that one is that. It's not you say it, it's God say it. So you're banking yeah. on his integrity and not yours. You're banking on his assurance, you know, your, your assurance is in him and not in you, right. you know. But I mean, for me, that's what my destination usually is. You know, so, so some people, it is goals and, you know, setting a goal, having a vision for, you know, who you are, etc. But I've gotten to the stage now, Jan, where my destination is always what God says. <laughs> You know, so thank you for that point. It is it is always now for me what God says. But for those who are not of that kind of, you know, um, mind or even who have that kind of relationship, it's also what's the vision you have for your life that's, you know, the better version of you. Um, yeah, the better version of you, the goal that you want to achieve. Right, so right, to finish the process now. So now we've I'm hearing some cats in the line, but anyway, now that we've identified where we want to go, where that whether it's who God says or if you have a vision and goal for your life, and you're now conscious of where you are, it's mapping that path to now bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to go. And no, okay. so you huh? Jan just said hi. Oh, hey, Jan. So now that you've mapped this part, this this pathway, you know, say, if you're traveling to Mobe, for example, it take you three hours. You can't expect to get there in one minute, right? It's a three hours journey. So you are already, if you're taking a trip to Mobe, you are consciously going to prepare yourself for a three hour journey. It's the same thing with what you've mapped. It's not going to be overnight, as you were saying, Jan. So this is where you now you have to give yourself grace, and now you have to break down the 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 the, 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 the signposts along the path into what I call actionable items, right? So these are the things that you can do now to improve, because you can't move from here so to there so overnight, and it's gonna be a lot of sub goals that will help you to achieve that bigger goal. So it's now breaking down that process now of mapping also includes breaking down the sub goals. You know, what do I need to achieve in order to get to that final destination? And then now when you have your sub goals is, all right, these are my goals. What are my action items? What can I do? And you're basically changing habits. So this is, this is how we get to habits now. So after you identify the sub goals, sometimes it could be, a state of being that you desire sometimes it could be 
um, a lifestyle you want to live or even just a characteristic you want to hone. And the question is going to be, how can I develop um, this characteristic? That would be the question. And so now you identify what habits you can now start implementing as well as what habits you need to, to remove. So what you do is a trading. You're removing one and you're replacing it with a better one. That's the best way to do it. The swap. So you identify yeah. the what... Here, oh, your camera is gone. <laughs> camera is gone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So you're identifying... What were you saying, Jan? I'm saying nature affords a vacuum. So if you, if you remove one thing and don't put something there, something's going to come back. It's going to come it's back. Gonna come. And it's the most familiar thing to you. So you're going to go back to what you know. Okay. Right? People do what they know. So the idea is that you are going to know something differently so that you can do it automatically. But it takes some time to know anything. And so now that's why you have the action items and you have these techniques to introduce these small changes. And this is what consistency, this is where consistency and small comes in. Because to create a new habit, you have to do it consistency, consistently. And you also have to do it in small doses. Your body would automatically respond in flight or flight fight mode if it sees a threat to homeostasis, to its balance, to wherever it is. The body doesn't know whether it's healthy or unhealthy. It just knows that you're at a place of balance. And anytime you try to threaten that, it's going to respond. So that's why you do changes small. Almost like it's under the radar, you know, that your, 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 your body doesn't really pick it up. So you won't have that reaction going against your efforts. Um, so you identify the small action items. You do them consistently. So you have mentioned um, stacking. So like stacking habits is another one. So, so for example, I want to have more consistent devotions because I know I need to boost my spiritual life. This is an example. But most of the time I come home, I get busy, and then I end up in my bed, and it's in the morning, and I say, oh, no, I never have my devotions. So stacking basically is, is using other routines that you already have, and then you stack a new re routine on it. So it's almost like you're leveraging the habits you already have and use that to help you to, to develop a new habit. You know, so you do one after the other. You know, or you put it in between two things, you know, that kind of a thing. So, yes, you have to be conscious in that moment of doing it. But the trigger will be when I do this thing that is already habitual, I will now do this new thing. Right. So you're stuck in the habit there. There's another one like um, when I brush my teeth, it triggers something else. So you tag it. I, I use the word tagging. So it's kind of similar to stacking, but it's stacking is more in layers. Tagging could be side to side. So I could yeah. brush my teeth while I'm listening to something on the, you know, if I'm reading right. So you have different ways of, of trying to leverage what you already have. You can have accountability partners. If somebody is supportive on this journey, they could be an accountability partner, keep you in check. You, you, um, you open up to them about the journey. They remind you of certain things. When you're out, they will make sure that you don't breach your own you know, your own rules that you've set for yourself, that kind of a thing. Um, other way of, 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 of developing new habits to, to introduce consistency. So some people do vision boards as a way of organizing what their, their goals are for a period of time. Um, vision boards by themselves will be just a trigger reminder it's not going to give you the details necessarily you're going to have to work the details separately from the vision board itself um but having a vision board is a reminder of what your goals are so if you come home frustrated one day from work and for some reason you're wondering why you bother you go up into your room you see a vision board you say oh yes that's why i bother you know so it kind of gives you that motivation and that momentum to continue again it helps to refresh your thoughts in the moment and kind of set you back on track. So those things kind of help um, developing habits. Um, yeah, a very simple one. 
I have words on focus so that strategic points of my house. Right. So they, they, they the triggers, a reminder. So one of my big words is consistency. And when I see consistency, I know what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, and the thing is, Jan, you you also have to know yourself and what works for you. Um. So for some people, it may be post-it notes. It might be use an accountability partner. Um. For other people, it might be use an app. Cause there are lots of apps now that you can load up your your act activities. You track them. You know, it gives you reports and prompts. It gives you reminders during the day. If you set for drinking water, it's like some people will set a goal that I need to drink more water. So every two hours, the app will alarm, go and drink your water. You know, that can, there are so many systems that you can use, um, especially in 2022, to help you to actually develop new habits and to um, accomplish your tasks. There is something I was going to say. Oh, and in addition to setting tasks and finding creative ways to commit to the tasks there is also being aware of what will prevent you from doing this the, ta the task so it's almost like yeah man i know my tendencies or i know my triggers i know my temptations i'm gonna plan for them yeah. right so you're not denying what your reality is but now you're gonna outsmart yourself so that is important. One of the ways I do that is um, like if I decide that I'm not supposed to be having something, some sort of food, I just make sure it doesn't come into the house. I don't buy it. I go to the supermarket and I don't buy it. Got you. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, that, that that's important. If you yeah, but so if, if in a family no. Well, there's some things that you know you have a proclivity to, and especially if your family is supporting you, trust me, or you ask them to support you, they'll be okay with it, I think. Okay, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, if they see me, if they see me with it, they go, Mommy, you're not supposed to be eating that, you know, <laughs> or, 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 or literally, they'll take it away. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So, or I get the one day, I say, Boy, you know, I feel for, and they're like, No. <laughs> And you know, some you know what I found in my diet journey, Jan, was a craving for something sweet is not a bad thing. So instead of drawing for the cake, you know, you find something healthy that is naturally sweet. It could be a fruit. It could be that you you make your own cake. You know, you whether you use a healthier sugar or you reduce the sugar content. You know, whether it is you're you're, you're addicted to chocolate, so you switch from from um you switch from eh? you move to the dark chocolate, um, and you move from seventy percent dark to eighty percent dark to ninety percent dark. You know, so it's small improvements that you're making. You don't want anything massive overnight, cause you won't be able to maintain that. Absolutely, it is a way to set yourself up to fail. Um, so yeah, you you prepare for what is likely to stop you from doing it. You know, you identify them up front and you plan for them. Yeah. You know, so it, it's it's both an an offensive and a defensive strategy that you have to combine to guarantee that you are successful in what you want. Yeah, I know it's a good time to be talking about stuff like this you now. Um, because now we're coming up to the end of the year, so people are thinking about their plans. And you know, every new year, there's people make tons and tons of all of these um, New Year's resolutions or stuff that they want to change. And by mid-February, they're gone out the window because there's really no concrete plan of how to, mm -hmm. to change this. Yeah. So I to get plan. It's more than just saying, I want to change. Yeah, you have to visualize, you have to map, and you have to plan. So I actually have a, um, with two of my friends, we do a vision board thing every year, but we, we expanded 
beyond just doing a vision board activity. Mm-hmm. All right? And we actually have a one-year community with the people. So we'll walk them through the process of creating the vision, you know, identifying the goals, identifying the sub-goals, identifying the DNAs, you know, having accountability partners, that kind of a thing, and working it through with individuals to help them to actually achieve these new goals. You know, because we found that just having a vision board one off and people are left for the rest of the year to figure it out. That's why they will abandon it. Right. You know, right. but it does take work. There is absolutely nothing that doesn't take work. Yeah, it does take work. It takes a lot of work. And it and it, it, it the journey is easier with with um with with advisors or or somebody to an accountability part to support you. It's always better when you have people of like mind and, and like intentions to support you in your journey. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, so, remember, Andrea, what's your website again? Um, mainly disidentify.com. <laughs> Oh, that one has a different name, but if they go on the on the um the Facebook page at Disidentify J A, whether on Instagram or on Facebook, you can see the links. Right. Some courses which can help you to, to set yourself up or to give her a thought. Indeed. How are you this week? Good to have you. Rose just came on. Yeah, so she missed the conversation. We'll have to go and watch it again, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we can do a very quick summary um, because it was just from one to the next. We spoke about criticisms, which is something that we all face in life and we don't like it. But now recognizing that criticisms can either set you up to, to sin or it can set you up to win. So you have to be smart about it. When somebody criticizes you, you now have to say, you know what, I'm going to use this opportunity to make me better as opposed to to respond in a way that I'm going to regret or be embarrassed about later on. So now that dovetails into this idea of consciousness being one of the things that helps you to know deal with criticisms generally because you can't avoid criticisms it's a factor it's a facet of life and i will dare to say that we need criticisms to help us change we need to be offended in order for us to be less prideful also and also for us to just improve right um so now the consciousness is talking about being able to observe yourself, being able to identify your own sensitivities, your, your, your personal wounds, you know, that may be carrying from a childhood that now spill over into the community when you're interacting with people. Um, we're talking about being present, allowing yourself to come out of the future tripping and regretting the past and, and coming back to the present so that you can make conscious decisions because you can't make conscious conscious decisions unless you are present, unless you are aware, right? So in the moment when criticism's shooting at you, like say you're in a war, right? You want to be the type of person that is so aware of yourself that yes, the things are coming, but I can sense one, when a thought comes in, when a feeling come in, or you just sense the body language, your, 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 your chest start tighten up. You start breathing faster. Your head, you have a tightness in your neck because you're ready now for war. You know, all of these signs being aware of picking them up so that you can stop yourself before you do damage, right? So consciousness is what helps you to be able to identify before you respond in a way that you're going to res- um, regret And then now the third C that we were talking about is consistency. So the thing is you you can't be, you won't be able to be conscious, conscious all the time. So what you want is to create habitual responses that you are proud of and that is healthy. And so now we are talking about introducing 
um, newer habits, introducing um, better mindsets, introducing better attitudes, you know, so whether it is your behavior, your thinking pattern, how you tend to feel and how you view certain things, it's not working on enhancing these things and improving them. But you can only do so within the framework of consistently doing it, whatever this action item or habit is, and also doing it in a small dosage so that you don't trigger the fight or flight mode in your body that will resist any effort that you're trying to achieve. So those are the three C's, criticisms beyond our control. But our consciousness is within our control. What we do consistently is within our control. And if we are able to, to, to master what we are aware of and also to create better habits, then now we are able to respond to criticisms better because criticisms can actually help us. Yeah. You can sit down and have somebody criticize you. When you decide to be offended, that's distracting you, you know. Just by hearing what somebody says, even if you don't agree with them, there may be some points that are valid that you can use to enhance and improve whatever you're doing. It's an opportunity to grab those things, improve, and then you dump down the toilet what, not, what is not healthy or what is not true. Life is about reconciling, you know, reconciling yourself to, to who your, what your image is as God ordained it. That's what life is about. And so... You can never be at the place where you are settled and you've arrived. There's always something new, always something new to achieve, always another area to work on, another characteristic to develop, some stuff to get rid of. You know, so we really don't have the time to say we've arrived or stop growing. You know, you have to keep growing. And so there's always this room for improvement. So I want to encourage you guys to... Keep improving, keep working on yourself. As long as you have life, you can change, right? You're not set, you're not fixed, you're living. And so therefore you can always change and improve yourself, but then you can also deteriorate. If you choose not to improve, what will happen is that over time you're going to deteriorate. So it's one or the other. And we don't want people to deteriorate, so we want you to make the effort to improve yourself little by little. So that you can grow to not only be a better reflection or, or, or to, to come closer to who you truly are, but that life will be easier for you. The more you know yourself better, the more you improve, is the more you experience and understand life better. And so it's a whole different experience for you. So thank you guys for joining us. I don't know what happened to, to Jan just now. She disappeared on us, but we've come to the end of our live and I want to thank you again for joining us. Um, have a wonderful evening. Bye guys.